Hello. Today we're going to talk about the interference of waves. So our first goal is to talk about both constructive interference and destructive interference. And then we'll also talk about beats, and that's one application of the interference of waves. So interference basically comes down to superposition. So you have more than one way of traveling in a medium then what happens is the waves simply add together. So the picture here shows two waves, wave one in red and wave two in blue, and together they combine to, to uh, form the purple wave at the bottom, which is labeled wave one plus wave two. And so you note at a place like uh, this, for instance, the amplitude of wave one plus wave two is zero, that's because you've got a trough, a very, it's kind of a negative amplitude place in wave two, combining with a positive amplitude, a peak in wave one. Put them together, they cancel out. Whereas here, you've got a very big amplitude of wave one plus wave two, and in both wave one and wave two, you've got peaks there. Okay, so the bottom line is that the net displacement of a point in the medium is the sum of the displacements at that point due to each individual wave. And we've done it here for two waves, but you can combine as many waves as you want in a similar way. So it's really all about superposition. Okay, so let's talk about constructive interference in particular. And what happens here is that the result is larger than the individual uh, amplitudes, okay, the resulting amplitude. So both the uh, individual waves give uh, displacements in the uh, same direction, and so they always add together. And a neat feature of this is that waves approaching each other, say along a string, add together, give you this big constructive interference place for a small time interval. And then they just move apart as if they've never met. It's kind of cool. Okay, so we'll kind of see this on a video here. So we've got uh, the top wave in, in red traveling to the right. There's a wave traveling to the left. And these are also, they're actually traveling together on the same string, which is at the bottom, so that you can see what happens when they come together. Okay, so here we go, the waves moving left and right, and you get this big amplitude place where they come together, constructive interference, and then they move apart as if they never met at all. Okay, in a very similar way, we have something called destructive interference, and this is where the individual waves want the medium to go in opposite directions, basically. So you get cancellation, which may be complete cancellation, but can also be just partial cancellation. Okay, so in the picture we have uh, equal and opposite kind of mirror image pulses uh, approaching each other. And for one instant, the pulse is actually completely canceled. It's completely destructive interference there. And then almost by magic, out from that flat string, reemerges the pulses and they move away as if they'd never met. Okay, so this kind of begs the question, you know, if the spring, string is completely flat, at one instant, how do the pulses reemerge from that flat string? How can you tell the difference between that flat string and a regular old flat string which, on which no pulses would, would come about because they weren't there in the first place? And where's the energy required to do this? Okay, so we'll get to those questions. But again, we'll have a little video of this. And so here we have, we'll start with uh, non-identical pulses just to see the destructive interference happening. So you see partial cancellation. And then we'll move on to the exactly equal and opposite kind of identical shape pulses. And so here we will see the just for an instant the complete cancellation. Again, the string is completely flat at that one instant. And watching that video kind of allows you to see what happens. So the bottom line is that at the instant the string is completely flat, well, some parts of the wave are travel are of the medium are traveling down at that instant. Some are traveling up, so there's a distribution of velocities uh, vertically of parts of the string 
and that's where the pulses reemerge from. So it's actually lots of kinetic energy uh, is in the string system, and that reforms the uh, the pulses. Okay, so an example of superposition and constructive and destructive interference is what we call beats. Okay, and beats involves waves of two two different frequencies, but they're not that different. They're similar frequencies, they have to be a little different, but uh, not that far off from one another in frequency. Okay, and when you hear beats, you hear a sound that goes something like wow, 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 kind of like that. There is an intensity of the sound that rises and falls. Okay, and the bottom line here is that, again, it's constructive and destructive interference. Okay, so the waves might start off, as they do on the right side of the screen here, uh, constructively interfering, and so you get a large amplitude there. And then, later on, the waves kind of drift out of phase with each other, and then they completely cancel, and you hear nothing. And then they drift out of phase even more until peaks line up with peaks and troughs line up with troughs again. You get a big amplitude sound, and it keeps doing that, it keeps cycling through that um, that cycle of large and small intensity. And what you get is. In a perfect world, in fact, the sound oscillates from maximum to zero. It's pretty hard to get exactly zero. The waves have to have exactly the same amplitudes. But if you can arrange it, you do get to zero. And the closer the waves are together in frequency, then the slower the cycle of rising and falling happens. And the frequency at which you rise and fall is known as the beat frequency. And it turns out that the beat frequency is the difference in frequency between the two waves. Okay, so if you have a 452 hertz wave and a 450 hertz wave, then you will hear a beat, wow, 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 happening at a frequency of 2 hertz. Okay, so you can't actually hear a 2 hertz sound, but that's not what we're saying. You're hearing a sound with a frequency of around 451 hertz, in fact but it, the amplitude rises and falls at the rate of uh, two cycles per second. Okay, so that's all so far for our introduction to uh, interference of waves, which is really all about superposition.